So I will be doing weekly breakdowns to episodes of Marvel's What If TV series. So be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel so you can check out new episodes along with my weekly episodes of Coffee and Trailers. What If is a comic book anthology series that was published by Marvel that debuted in 1977. The first What If was What If Spider-Man Joined the Fantastic Four? And What If number 24, which was titled What If Gwen Stacy Had Lived? And it focuses on the consequences of Spider-Man's secret identity being exposed to the public. And that really sounds like the plot to Spider-Man No Way Home. Jeffrey Wright is going to narrate the entire series as the Watcher. And pretty much the Watchers are the creepy security guards of the MCU. They like to watch, but not interfere. Pretty much like a security guard. Security guards can watch you still and write down what time you stole. But as soon as you leave that building with that stolen merchandise, there's really not much they could do besides watch you leave. No, I'd prefer to stay. There. That's the moment. When asked to leave the room, Margaret Peggy Carter chose to stay. So Peggy's decision not to go into the booth starts off a chain reaction that changes everything. So by Peggy staying down there, cause Heinz Kruger to set off the bomb before Steve Rogers is given the serum. So that starts off a chain of events that causes Colonel Flynn to get shot. And then Steve Rogers is shot twice. So it's not until Heinz Kruger steals the vial that Peggy Carter is forced to kill him. And in the first Captain America, Heinz Kruger was chased down and then Captain America pulls him out of the water and then he went kamikaze and killed himself by that poison tooth, poison chewable tooth. <sniffs> yeah. Steve Rogers is voiced by Josh Keaton, who is a voice actor and musician. And he played Shiro in Voltron and had voice roles in Transformers Prime and Spectacular Spider-Man. And Peggy Carter doesn't end up going on that USO tour like Steve Rogers. Not all of us can storm a beach or drive a tank, but there's still a way all of us can fight. But she ends up punching this punching bag just like Steve Rogers did. <laughs> Howard Stark gives Peggy Carter her shield. And instead of the star, it has the Union Jack on it. And just like Captain America's shield was outlined in red, Peggy Carter's shield is outlined in blue. So Peggy Carter's first mission seems to go a lot better than Captain America's first mission. And she starts it off right away by going heads up with this truck with her shield. <laughs> And then she uses her shield a lot better than Steve Rogers uses his shield. This mission causes her to kidnap Dr. Zola and the Tesseract before Red Skull could get his hands on it. Steve Rogers becomes the first Iron Man, aka Hydra Stomper. So since Peggy Carter got her hands on Zola and the Tesseract, Howard Stark was able to use the Tesseract to power this suit that he built for Steve Rogers, AKA the Hydra Stomper, AKA the first Iron Man. And they go on a mission to rescue Bucky and the 107th, just like Captain America did in the first one. So after they rescue Bucky and the 107th, then there's a montage of Peggy kicking ass. And my favorite scene that was a small scene in this show was Peggy Carter using the shield to go straight through the plane. That reminded me of those planes on uh, Memphis Bell. 
She just used the shield a lot better. And instead of a skinny kid from Brooklyn, Steve Rogers becomes a skinny kid from Brooklyn, but in an iron suit. Bucky doesn't become Winter Soldier. So it's the exact same train scene, but instead of them having those weapons from the Tesseract, Steve Rogers has the Tesseract in his suit. So what Red Skull does is he sets a trap so that it's made to seem like Steve Rogers dies in his indestructible suit. But really, Red Skull just wanted the Tesseract. Well, Peggy Carter saves Bucky from falling to his doom. <laughs> And eventually saving him from himself. Bucky? Who the hell is Bucky? So once Red Skull gets his hand on the Tesseract again, he opens up a portal bringing out the Hydra monster. Instead of Red Skull being sucked into the portal and end up being the gatekeeper for the Soul Stone, he's killed by the Hydra monster. So now Peggy must miss the date. You owe me a dance lesson. Yes, Saturday night. So in order to defeat the Hydra beast, Peggy Carter must push it back into the portal with her shield. And then when she comes out on the other side, she's greeted by Nick Fury, voiced by Samuel L. Jackson in Hawkeye voiced by Jeremy Renner. Instead of Loki coming out of the portal at that time of Avengers. Sir, please put down the spear. Now it's Peggy Carter. Ma'am, please put down the sword. And she has officially become the first Avenger, just like Steve Rogers did in Captain America when he sacrificed himself to save everybody and then they took him out of the ice 70 something years later. So what did you think of the first episode of Marvel's What If TV series? What if Peggy Carter became the first Avenger? Now I really liked it and I liked how they took one small event that changed a few noticeable things. Like Peggy not going in the booth caused her to become the first Avenger, which caused her to get a hold of the Tesseract early. Steve Rogers become Iron Man. Peggy Carter was there to save Bucky before he fell. So now Bucky doesn't become Warner Soldier. And instead of Peggy sacrificing herself and then coming out of the ice 70 years later, she goes through some worm time hole and then comes out seven years later. I just really enjoyed how they turned the first Captain America Avenger movie into a 30 minute cartoon. And I really liked Peggy Carter as the first Avenger. So did you like Marvel's What If show? Let me know in the comments. What did you think? What was your favorite scene? Did you not like it? And remember, I will be doing weekly breakdowns to Marvel's What If series. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and subscribe right now so that you can get new episodes along with weekly episodes of Coffee and Trailers. And as always, until next time. The one that's freeze, Pete. Can't nobody tell me ain't that guy. I'm back to the future, boy. I'm McFly. Ah.